So now in this video, we're going to use an op amp as a comparator. We're using a single supply op amp. I should have wrote op amp in between there. But in uh, any case, that means that the output can go uh, directly to ground or almost directly to ground. In any case, probably doesn't get all the way to VCC though, which is it's pretty common for integrated circuits. And then some op amps are made to get uh, really close to either one of the rails. They're called rail to rail op amps. But uh, in any case, if you're working just with DC with a single supply, you really want a single supply op amp. So we're going to use the LM358 right here. Very well known. So you can see the output is the top pin on the left. It's also a top pin there. We're not going to use this one though. And then right below it is the inverting input or the negative symbol. And then the non-inverting input or the plus symbol, whichever one you want to say. So then we got to power it too. So uh, we'll look at that but it's output above inverting and then er inverting above non-inverting. And you notice on the schematic, the inverting is above the non-inverting. That's not always the case. Sometimes they're drawn the other way. So make sure that uh, you check the pin layout of the op amp on here and also where the inverting and non-inverting is on there. And not all of them have this exact same pin layout. Look at every single uh, op amp you use very carefully its data sheet its pin layout and whatnot because they all vary uh, quite a bit so in any case they work about the same though once you get the uh, right pins now reason the LM358 it's one out of two there was two of them on there so we're just going to set the voltages with voltage dividers pretty straightforward and uh, so we have the I'm going to call this the reference voltage. So that will be the uh, voltage that is set. It's not going to change. And uh, the other voltage will be in relationship to it. So we put that to the inverting input. And I wrote 100K on uh, the resistors, but I grabbed 10K. Doesn't matter, uh, really. More current will flow through these two resistors as they'll be in series. So I'll put this one to uh, the negative rail and then put that to second pin down the inverting input we're just making a voltage divider the input doesn't let current in or out it just looks at the voltage so 100 uh, kilo ohm resistors would let through one tenth of the current that these do from positive rail to negative rail uh, but still this is pretty low so no big deal and I'm keeping a lot of space here we'll see why but uh, they're going to the inverting input I already have a trim pot at the non-inverting input so that I can adjust it and uh, pretty straightforward right there it's got three pins this uh, one that's really nice some of them have uh, bigger uh, terminals on there that kind of stretch the board a little bit I really like uh, these trip pots so I might even buy more I think this might be the only one I have that is like this it's a 10 kilo ohm trim pot by the way again exact value not important but uh, what I have is a 10 kilo ohm they seem to be uh, really common, so I'll often just write 10 kilo ohms on there. Now, I have nothing on the output as far as the diagram is concerned because I'm just going to add LEDs and instead of drawing them out and whatnot, we've used them quite a bit in this video series, uh, we're just going to add them to the board. So, I want this LED to light when the output is low, when it basically connects to the negative rail. And so I'm going to put the long lead, the anode, to that jumper there. This LED, I want the opposite. I want it to light up when the output's high. So I'm going to put the cathode to the uh, negative rail right there. Long lead, the anode, I'm going up one row. Now, we're going to use a couple of resistors to the output. So that's that top pin that we looked at before. And uh, that's why I had to put that voltage divider as far away from the uh, pin as possible because we're working our way back here but again this is uh, these op amp circuits really are simple once you get the uh, basic fundamentals of the op amp down you can just look at a basic schematic uh, diagram and just make a uh, slight modifications from what you're used to building for the most part and it will do something interesting so the power supply is off right now now I hit the uh, power button which turns the output on and uh, you actually have to unplug it to completely turn it off but there you can see this LED is lit 
and it's to the negative rail. That tells me the output is high. So this is up a little bit more, even though it looks halfway. If I go down a little bit, now that LED is on. So now the output is low. So basically it's connected to uh, the negative rail, actually from the uh, power pin over there, fourth pin down, and then the positive is the eighth pin up there. But in any case, right now the output is uh, low. You can tell that's more positive. So it would work its way over to negative. And if I turn this up more positive, so it's closer to the positive rail there than halfway, because we set our halfway point, again, the output's high. It's really that simple. So I'm trying to keep uh, these videos straight. And also, you notice we got uh, about 7 milliamps approximately, and then 8 milliamps with that LED. That tells me that both of these are getting about the same distance from the uh, rail, the output. And uh, because the, the current's uh, pretty close. And uh, but a little bit more coming from the uh, positive rail, so they don't the outputs don't usually get exactly to the uh, rail voltages, but some of them get close, some of them not so close. So the not so close ones are the dual or split supply op amps. But in any case, topics for other videos, uh, more detailed videos, and whatnot. That's the end of this one. Make sure you check out one of the other videos that I post. Click like, subscribe, the bell. I will see you in the next video.